<laughs> and I wasn't going to have people walking into that gym saying, oh, what a beautiful big gym. Oh, look at those scoreboards. I, it wasn't going to happen. Not on my watch. I told them to keep the money for the scoreboard. Put that thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 into your budget somewhere else. Let me go raise the money. Hello, and welcome to the Dactronics Experience Podcast. I'm Justin Oxner here with Matt Anderson. Today, we're joined by Kyle Saito, Market Manager for Dactronics, and Bud Postma, former athletic director and a current uh, consultant for Dactronics. They're going to talk about Bud's project with the Dactronics Sports Marketing Group when he was an athletic director, his transition to being a Dactronics employee, and what a project like that can do for a school. And we're here today with Kyle and Bud to talk a little bit about Dectronic Sports Marketing. Kyle, how you doing? Hey, good. How are you? I'm doing great. Matt, how you doing over there? I'm, I'm getting by, Justin. Thank you. All right. We'll get to Bud here in a minute. But first, Kyle, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your role with Dectronic? Yeah, sure. I am the high school park and rec market manager uh, here for Dectronic. I've been in the position for about two years now, and my job is to uh, work with our marketing teams, our product teams, and our sales teams to make sure we have the right products and we're bringing it to the market in the right ways. And uh, we're making sure that it does uh, the things that our customers want it to do to help them do their jobs better and easier uh, throughout the school year. All right. And then we also have Bud on the line. Bud, can you please give our listeners maybe a, an introduction of yourself and uh, what you do? Uh, absolutely. And thanks for having me, guys. Um, I'm Bud Postman. and I'm a retired athletic director from Madison High School, Madison, South Dakota. Uh, I retired in June of 2018, um, come on board with Dactronics um, in July of 2018. Um, I spent 32 years at Madison High School, 19 as a teacher, and then the last 13 years as the athletic director, um, assistant principal at Madison High School. And like I said, for the last uh, year and three quarters, I've been with um, Dactronics in the HSPR department. Okay. And the topic we're going to talk about today is Dactronic Sports Marketing. So Kyle, can you give us a little overview of what that is? Sure. Um, a lot of our products are viewed so commonly in, in football stadiums or, or gymnasiums across the country that, that uh, we've identified that there's a revenue generation potential for sponsorships on video displays and scoreboards and using sound systems for, for things like PA announcements. The uh, the idea really started about 15 years ago of as a way for Dectronics to help our customers pay for our products. And really what, is, what has happened uh, over the last 15 years is it's, it's become not only a way for our customers to buy our products through sports marketing or through sponsorships, but a way for them to generate even a long-term revenue stream above and beyond our equipment. Uh, so schools today are are uh, using sponsorships to um, uh, pay for our equipment, but also fund other things for their athletic program. And, and our sports marketing program or our sports marketing department is a group of people that uh, their specific role at our company is to understand sports sponsorships, to understand the potential of schools and help help schools um, create those plans at their school and roll them out and generate, um, uh, maximize the, the amount of money that they can generate. Yeah, and I think about about this topic, right, But you got to have a lot of experience with this, uh, having been an athletic director. Can you give us a little bit about um, kind of how have you worked with this kind of topic? Yeah, you know, and, and as an athletic director, you, you, especially in a high school and then a smaller size high school like us, like Madison, you know, you wear a lot of hats um, from – from scheduling to officials to, and I was the assistant principal, so I had discipline oh, wow. and lunch duty. I mean, you just name it, you know, you kind of do it all. You're kind of a jack of all trades. So when it comes to marketing, you know, a lot of athletic directors, you know, they're, they seem like they're too busy or whatever. Well, that wasn't going to be the excuse for me because I knew what we, what we needed, what we wanted in Madison, especially what I wanted and had that vision. And so to throw on top of all your other duties to throw some of the marketing things in there and, and planning of a gym project and a video project and, and going out to see all the sponsors, it adds a lot to, to your plate. However, you got to look at the big picture. You got to look at that big picture and say, is it worth the time and energy to do? And, and in my eyes, it definitely was. And, and we went, um, 
we went all in, you know, jumped both feet in on our project here in, what was it, um, eight years ago. And, and it was, it turned out to be one of the best things, you know, I, I, I did as an athletic director. You know, we had a lot of success athletically and activities and all that. You know, we had, um, go on to college, uh, athletics, all those things. But I tell you what, the end product of our, our video project, and our marketing product that we did with Dactronic is, is still um, one of my highlights of my uh, athletic director career. And Bud, um, uh, you know, the, you have a really unique story for, for all of our DSM customers, our sports marketing customers, because not only did you want a piece of equipment, but you you were looking at it from a from a scale of a of a new project or a project that you were working on as a way to not only fund something but to pull stuff out of your current budget or or uh, uh, proposed budget for your project. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, high schools when you when you do a uh, a bond issue, which most uh, remodels or new construction is, you know, and then the architect once it passes, then the architect's plans come to fruition, and then we get all the bids. Most times, nine out of ten times, maybe even more than that, the bids come in higher than what you had passed for a bond issue. So then comes the dreaded cut. You know, what's going to get cut first? Well, you're not going to cut the education part of a of a project, and, and I wouldn't expect that. Even as mm-hmm. athletic-minded as I am, I would not expect that, and I would not want that. You know, but of course, you know, we got cut. Um and, you know, so we're going to have this big, beautiful gym. Our locker rooms are going to be bare bones. Our, our scoreboard is going to be bare bones. Uh, I mean, I think they had thirty-five, forty thousand dollars $40,000 left in the budget for, you know, three small scoreboards and, and whatnot. And I just said at that time, no, this, ain't, this, this isn't going to work. Because at the end of the day, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, they're going to look and they're not going to remember who the superintendent was. They're not going to remember who's on the committee. They're not going to remember any of those things. They're going to remember one person and one person only. That, who, was the, who was the athletic director in charge at that time? And, and obviously that was me. And, <laughs> and I wasn't going to have people walking into that gym saying, oh, what a beautiful big gym. Oh, look at those scoreboards or or look at these locker rooms or the weight room or the training room. I, it wasn't going to happen, not on my watch. So I told them to keep the money for the scoreboard, put that thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 into your budget somewhere else. Let me go raise the money. Let me go do my thing. Let me go find the money for not only scoreboards, video boards, locker rooms, fitness center, um, all that stuff. And, and lo and behold, I about fainted when the committee said, Absolutely. Go ahead. And they kind of chuckled at me like thinking, huh, yeah, right. I'm not sure he's going to get, I'm not sure he's going to come up with enough money to get the $40,000 yeah. back. But, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, that's what happened in our situation. So I kind of got turned loose, if you will, um, to go do my thing. So it was, it was kind of a unique situation. I, I wouldn't recommend it to everybody, uh, going that route, just, you know, to take away all support and go get your own money. But, uh, it sure worked out for us. And Bud, um, obviously, you doing that, you were looking at some electronic scoreboard. Electronic scoreboards would have been in the budget. Uh, and when you turn to look at the electronics video boards, um, you obviously had the passion, had the ambition, and, and knew that knew that you could get it done. Um, you also worked with Jerry uh, Sickink here at electronics in our sports marketing division. What sort of support did he help you along the way? You know, it was. Kind of invaluable, you know. I, I had an idea of what we wanted. I had a pretty good idea of what needed to be done. But Jerry basically, you know, kind of set the foundation for me. Um, we talked, what what are we going to ask for? What are our price points for our anchor sponsors, for our founding sponsors? Um, and then, you know, gave us my gave me the prospectuses and all those things that I would not have had. Now, would I have gotten some of the sponsorships? I might have just because of my relationship with them. However, he, he gave me all the materials that I needed. And, and in most cases, Jerry would have gone along on, on the first couple sales, but I was confident enough that I didn't need his help um, on there. Now, had I flopped on the first one uh, or second one, um, I'd have been throwing uh, Jerry a call and saying, hey, uh, I need some help here. But it didn't, it didn't work out that way because I did get it done. However, I would not have been able to start it without Jerry there to um, give me give me the materials, uh, the price points, all those things. I would not have been able to do that without um, 
Jerry's help in the marketing program, Bell. I'm kind of, yeah. I'm kind of curious, cool Bud. Thing about- oh, sorry, Kyle. I was just saying, I was curious, Bud. Like, how did you end up meeting Jerry? Then was it, you know, you talked about originally it was more than just the scoreboards, and you wanted to go out on your own to get this funding. How did you and, and yep. Jerry end up get like uh, communicating together? Did you know that this was a service that Tronix offered, or how did that start? Even you know, not really, because everything we had ever done. That's that's a great question. Um, everything we'd ever done before with Dactronics was just basic scoreboard in our middle school gym, just a couple basic scoreboards, elementary gym, everything was basic, pretty basic, Mm -hmm. you know, but I had been in enough gym that with, um, some of the newer ones that they had started some projects and you see some sponsorship. So anyway, Don Hanson, who's a salesman for our area, um, him and I were going over our plans and what we wanted, what I envisioned this and that. And then, uh, I don't know, second, third meeting, Don brought Jerry along. Okay. Didn't know Jerry from the man in the moon. Didn't know, <laughs> didn't know him, didn't know what he did. And, and Jerry and I then became pretty good buddies. And, and since, we've gone on numerous trips together, uh, met with numerous athletic directors together, talking about this very same thing that we're talking about now. Uh, like Kyle's job before he got his current job, that's what Kyle did, and and I tell you what, you go in there with Jerry and I, with an athletic director, or superintendent, whatever, and and we can we can throw uh, we can we can come at them from both angles and and get a lot done. But Jerry, that's how I met Jerry, and um, and that's what would happen in most cases. Um, the salesman they go through, and once they get to the to this product, okay, now how are we going to pay for it? Yeah, you know. And mm-hmm. so that's that's where that's where then the salesman brings in. Okay, we got this guy. Uh, Jerry Sitke, Chris Topolsky, whoever that may be um, in their area, and then they'll meet up and and then they they come in and do that. So that's how I got hooked up with Jerry. Cool. That's one of the coolest. That's one of the coolest things about uh, uh, the DSM group for us, Matt and Justin, is that we we have people like Jerry around the country that can help people like Bud make these projects come to life. And uh, that's pretty unique in the industry. There's a lot of companies out there that. Um, uh, we'll sell advertising for you or uh, we'll act on your behalf, but really they're taking commissions and they're taking uh, some of that money um, uh, to pay for their services. But here at Dectronics, we really are, are uniquely positioned to be able to do this stuff uh, as a manufacturer to help our customers get the money to do what they want to do. Also to help us sell more equipment to a customer that might not uh, be able to buy that large of a project straight out of a budget, but it's been cool to see customers like Bud uh, really transform their projects from what was in the budget to, to uh, turning and looking at what could be. And, um, you know, having Bud on the call here is kind of, uh, kind of fun for, for me, Uh, Bud and I've worked together for about two years now. Uh, I'll let Bud tell the actual story, but, you know, I think, as Bud moved through uh, through his project and then retired and and uh, became a uh, fr- uh, what do you call it a free agent I guess um, <laughs> he was he was at the national AD show and um, uh, kind of stumbled upon working for Dectronics and and it's been really cool because in the, right now Bud travels all over the country working for us going to state conventions and and uh, new athletic director meetings and telling his story to teach him about the project that he did and how, uh, taking settling for your budget, settling for, for a dollar amount that's in your, in your budget, isn't always the right move. It isn't always the move you have to make. So, um, but maybe quick, tell the story about the, uh, the national AD show and, and, uh, how your, your green Bay Packers landed you a job here at Dectronics. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a good point. And that is so true. You know, that the Packers actually are responsible for me, working for Dak Tronics. And I never thought of that, Kyle, until just now since you said that. So, um, yeah, we're, and, and here we are talking to Justin and Matt, a Viking and a, and a yeah, Bears I didn't fan. know you were a Packers uh, fan until we don't, got don't on this that. call, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't delete that either. Um, yeah, we got the whole NFC North represented here. Yeah. <laughs> we do. And there's, there's only one real champion in the whole group. But anyway, <laughs> let's go back to it. <laughs> We're at Nashville, um, Tennessee in 2016, December 2016. And I'm, a, I'm just an athletic director at that time. I'm, I have no association with Dactronics other than, you know, I bought their product and we did, we did, we did our big project and we've um, done all that. So 
uh, Saturday or Sunday morning, I wake up, I tell my wife, she was along with us. I said, do what you want to do. But the Packers played at like, I think the afternoon game, the three o'clock game or whatever. I said, I got a couple meetings to go to when we're done. I'm coming home. I'm changing clothes. We're going to go find some dive sports bar off the beaten path. <laughs> and we're going to just belly up and we're going to watch Packers. So sure enough, we find, we Google one and we find one and it's an old fish market actually. And it is cool, cool place. I don't even think Kyle knows this, but I went to the restroom halfway through right before the game started. They have a back room that held, held a couple hundred people. All Packer fans, all Packer <laughs> fans. There's a Packer bar, not the, <laughs> lo and behold. But anyway, so I'm sitting at the, at the bar, my wife and I, and I got a chair next to me and this young guy comes sitting down next to me and he's in his mid thirties and we start talking. He's an athletic director. They're going to build this big new school, like a hundred million dollar school, high school, athletic facilities, all that. And, and, and I said, well, heck, you know, with all that, you're going to put in, um, electronic video boards, scoreboards, all that. And he says, Oh, we can't afford that. And I said, are you blanking crazy? <laughs> you know, how, how can you, how can you build this hundred million dollar facility and not put in the best equipment? Remember, I'm not working for Dactronics now. I'm just, I'm just a guy. <laughs> and so we start talking, and, and I tell them what, what I did in my project, how I raised the money, not only raised the money, raised extra money. We're driving around in this charter bus, you know, fancy bus that we paid for because of the extra money. And I go through this, and he says, can you say, tell me that again? So I tell him that again, and, and um, sure enough, uh, we get done. He's, he's going to leave. And I said, all right, here's the deal. You get your butt to the trade show tomorrow morning. You go to Dactronic booth and you talk to Tom and tell him, tell Tom, Bud sent you. And so next day comes mid afternoon. I get a phone call from Tom, um, Tom Coughlin. And he says, Hey, what are you and Kelly doing tonight? You want to go hang out with us guys? I'll buy you dinner. And I said, Hey, yeah, we're just going to hang out and go down to Broadway and, you know, listen to some music and have a few drinks. And, and so halfway through the night, I said, um, I wanted to buy a drink. Tom won't let me. And I said, come on, let me buy one. And he says, no, not after what you did today. What did I do today? I went to a few classes, a few sessions. <laughs> and he says, no, no, you, you sent Jeff to us. I said, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Oh, the guy, you mean the guy from the bar? He stopped in? Oh, yeah. Not only did he stop in, we got, a, we got an excellent chance of getting this project. <laughs> and so, and he says to me, he says, do you think you can do something like this? Like for a living when you retire? I know you're thinking about retiring a couple of years. I said, heck yeah, I can do this in my sleep. This is easy. <laughs> and, and, and thus, um, it was started. And so in January, um, like January before I went on to Mexico, I had to have my resignation in by January 1st. So I threw it on the superintendent's desk. And, and so I got back from Mexico. I said, Tom, we better get to work. I need a job. So thus, that's how I got my job. So I want to jump back a little bit. You said with your new project, you were looking at bare bones everything just some plain old scoreboards with just uh digits no video or anything and you convinced them to to keep the money they were going to do with that you were going to go out and find the money you ended up with video capable displays in in your arena from dactronics and sold ads and and paid for the whole project yep um so yeah we went um we went all in and our gym is very uh, for our size school or for any size school really is pretty large and so we needed a pretty big video board um, and scoreboards, and we need three scoreboards because we have three courts and all this, and, and we have, a, um, I think, 27 foot of scores table and, and all this. And so, yeah, it went from their $30,000, and then uh, since our gym is so tall and so big, we needed custom um, audio um, for our facility. So all in all, our project ended up being about $320,000. So it went from 30000 that they were going to give me for scoreboard to keep that. I'm going to raise the money, and we're going to do this $320,000 project. Video, live play-by-play -play video, um, stream to all of our concession stand, locker room, coach's room, my office, all that. You know, So, yeah, that I mean, we went from bare bones to, at that time, um, now there's obviously new product and, and, and things are upgraded, but at that time, Probably, and I'm still going to, you know, say it's still one of the nicest, best facilities in the state of South Dakota. That's and awesome. he's not even talking about his bus. <laughs> you know, bus? Yeah, yeah, we, 
to yeah. us. We bought with our extra money that we raised on all this sponsorship. So we paid it off in three years. You know, most people we try when we do this marketing thing, we try to get it paid off in five and then you renew the contract. So then year six through 10 is when you make your money. Okay. So if you're going to take in $50,000 easy, easy figure in sponsorship, um, so you get that facility paid off in five years or your product. And so then your next one, you got $50,000 coming in for five years, your money, free money. We paid ours because we got a bank to give us a big chunk. We paid ours off in three years. And so we got to do something with the money. And I said, you know, we had an old, old coach bus, you know, that, you know, um, like 1970, that was, it used more oil than it did uh, diesel, you know, so, um, so we, we needed to do something new. So I found, we found this bus, this brand new bus, brand new 52 passenger bus, um, TVs, USB ports, under storage, um, all that to buy with our money. So we drive around and all decaled up, all wrapped, um, completely wrapped. And so we paid, um, for that. And in fact, I think it gets paid off this coming year. And then they're going to go buy a mini coach, you know, one of those 25 passenger buses with the last two years of the project. So, yeah, so we do, we drive around Madison Bulldogs. If you ever see this fancy big white, well, it's not white, white maroon, yellow bus driving around. That's, uh, that's me. <laughs> nice. And I'm, nice. I'm thinking of, of, but I, I know I've heard you um, talk before and give examples about, I would say maybe it's the importance of getting in on the beginning when something like this happens. So when you set, you know, price points for those different sponsorship levels, you have to do that essentially from the beginning, right? And you have to know the appropriate amount for that because if you aim too low, the following years trying to increase anything is going to be a, a real big obstacle, right? That that is a great question, and we've um, I've run across a couple, but you know, a couple real real devastating ones where they think they're doing good, and and, and you know, you never want to tell somebody they're not doing a good job when you can raise twenty thousand dollars. Yep, you know that that that's real money. But not when you can raise forty, fifty thousand a year, not twenty for five years total. We're talking thirty, forty, fifty a year for five years. You know, that's a big deal. But if you don't to answer your question, if you don't get them early and they've already got commitment, well, you got commitment from from these these ten sponsors to give me five of them to give me a thousand and five of them to give me five hundred a year for, for five years. You can't go back to them and say, oh, by the way, uh, this marketing guy from Dactronics came in and said, oh, we need $5,000 a year and $2,500. <laughs> it's not going to work. No. <laughs> so if you if you don't get there early, and that's where those salesmen come in, you know, to bring Jerry in and bring those marketing guys in early. Um, to, you know, and, and I would have been pretty close. Uh, Jerry and I kind of bickered back and forth. You know whether we go with six thousand or five thousand or four thousand um, for that major uh, for our top level, and and we one of us wanted four, one of us wanted six, and we settled on five. Was there ever any concern on your end about switching from um, just the standard scoreboard to running the video display, or or who ran your video displays? Another great question. You guys should come along. We should go on the road and do this. All right, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it is a big concern because, you know, I'm kind of like Matt trying to hook this thing up. I have no clue on what to do <laughs> when it comes to technology. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. <laughs> it took a while to get used to. But, Thanks, bud. <laughs> um, you know, so, no, I really have no clue. And, if, and, and but I had an assistant, um, Al was his name, and he, he's, he's into this tech stuff. So I knew right away that I had a guy. But that's the best part about video and and not only Dactronics with this marketing thing, what, what, what it can do for you. You know, it's, it's Kyle's three pillars that he started a couple years ago, um, three pillars of promotion. You know, one, hey, how about some financial? You know, we all care about the money in this day and age. And we can not only get it paid for, but we can get you some money in your pocket. Okay, that's, that's one. Two, hey, we're going we're gonna to create an environment, an entertainment and environment for you that's going to, you know, it's going to blow your socks off. You know, these people, you know, you expect this at Detroit uh, stadium or the Vikings or the Packers, you expect it at a pro stadium or a major college. You don't expect this at a high school, but we're going to give you that. We're going to give you life. We're going to give you real commercials, real play by play. 
um, this, um, not to kiss cam because we could probably get in trouble in high school doing that, but <laughs> you know, get the camera around the audience and all those things. So the entertainment value, and then but to, to answer your question, the third one is the educational part of it. Not only we didn't have this when we did it, but now we have a curriculum. We have a curriculum out there that schools can buy. We're just finishing up a project in Del Rapid, not too far from here. They bought the curriculum. They're starting a, a video production class. They're actually starting a class for that. So kids will run it. And, and in Madison, the first year uh, between Al, um, our computer teacher, Joey, and once in a while I'd go up there, but not very often, you know, we'd get this thing running. By year two, 90% of the time it was the kids. By year three, three, four, five, six, seven, there's not an adult up there. Kids do it all. Kids hit the commercials. Kids hit the loops. Kids hit the, they're doing the live play by play. They're doing it. They're doing it all. We give them a script. They follow it. All it takes is a uh, three trips to the concession stand. And then our booster club, our booster club does pay the kids that work in the, we call it our DAC room. The booster club gives them a little bit of money, but um, that's what it is. So it's, our students run the whole shebang, you know, and, and when we do graduation, they do the video that goes up, all those things, um, it's student driven. So that is the, the best part about it is, you know, you got those three pillars. We're going to make you some money. We're going to pay for it, make you some money. We're going to create an environment, an entertainment level that's crazy. And then, oh, by the way, our students, High school students are going to run this thing. And quickly, before you ask the next question, uh, Iowa, there's uh, from Carroll, Iowa. Great story. Uh, these two kids apparently just went crazy. They just started putting stuff on that was over the top. Uh, and somehow the University of Iowa caught wind of this. They watched it. They recruit this kid just like an athlete. He's on a full-ride scholarship to the University of Iowa because they have DAC products. So this kid's going to go to the Hawkeyes. In fact, I think this was his freshman year. He's at the Iowa Hawkeyes free, free ride, full ride, just like an athlete, doing what he did in high school, only on a larger scale. You know, so that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And I don't we, if I'm not mistaken, Kyle, don't we have somebody working for Detroit? Didn't somebody just get hired by the Detroit Lions? Yeah, so I don't, I don't know the the full details on that, but from what I gather or from what I understand, there's there's a student from Nebraska high school in Nebraska yeah. that worked on his video board for three, four years throughout high school, uh, went to college, continued to work on it in college and, uh, is now a, uh, a video event operator there in, in Detroit. Yeah. And that's something wow. that like Justin and I have talked about. We've had a number of people on the podcast of that are event producers all the way from college to the pros. And every time you ask about them, you know, it's getting started. Like the pro ones always remember when they did in college what they learned, remembered when they did some yep. stuff earlier. So it's it's an educational career path that you started that previously may not have even been there. That curriculum yeah. that Bud was talking about that we have, you know, we have schools all over the country that have that have uh, started to implement that into their into their classes, and some some of them develop a brand new class, some of them roll it right into a current class. Mm -hmm. But the coolest part about that is is uh, seeing these high school kids gain that knowledge today on a DAC system, which, which we have a lot of DAC systems in the college and pro market. So they can roll straight out of high school into a, into a college and walk into an athletic department and say, Hey, I know how to run your system out there. I know how to run your display. And uh, not only is that cool for the high school, but even the colleges, I think, turn around and go, wait a minute, you what, you know how to do what? Yep. And uh, the fact that they can come in and, and say that, uh, makes it a pretty cool experience for everybody. It makes these makes this education at the high school level even that more valuable. So, Justin, your question of who runs it uh, that that quickly gets gets uh, uh, overrun by students all over all over the country with this uh, these scoreboards. Awesome, awesome. And Bud, you said something else that that I hadn't thought of right away. So you went it with a video display and then you said they started using it for graduation. So did you guys realize there were other events after you started to do that? Well, that was one of, you know, one of the things that, um, well, one, I'll go back a little bit. Madison High School, when we built this gym, 112 years of Madison High School in, in its existence, never had its own gym, never had graduation in its own facility. Either it was in the old downtown, the armory or the college uh, field house or what, 
but never in our own gym. So the big thing was we get to have graduation seven years ago in our own gym for the first time in the history of Madison High School. That's awesome. And so we play this big video. We interview every um, every senior, take their picture, blah, and all this, and we got that up there. But it's not only graduation, it's um, concerts. We got an indoor marching band concert that they put up their, their season-long video. We win a state football championship. We have their welcome home in there, uh, or state basketball championship. We have their welcome home in there, and somebody spent the night, you know, hours putting this video together, highlight video, and we put it up on this big screen, and, and we got the custom sound that'll blow, you up, blow your socks off. And so we, we put the music to it. We pumped the music to it. Um, and then we did a, we did a pregame um, with all of our sports a few years ago. And we had a, a, a gentleman that does this do it for us. And we cranked the music. And we have, indiv- we have kids actually talking about it. it. It's so good. You know, there's so many more uses for the video board. Everybody thinks, oh, basketball or football. There's so many more uses, whether it's assemblies. We had um, uh, Veterans Day a few years ago. The gentleman that was our guest speaker, we have the high school, middle school, and and um, we invite the public to come in. So we got probably 1,000 people in there, maybe 1,500. And this guy is a great speaker, but he has a, uh, about a 15-minute video he wants to show. So what do we do? We put it up on the video board and you know otherwise you got it on some projector screen yep. you know that you can't see you can't hear you can't hear it's on well the new ones coming out are darn near getting close to 1080p you know ours isn't quite there just because it's seven years old but the new ones like sioux falls put in they're real they're getting real close so you don't get much better than that so yeah there's way more uses than just athletics yeah and i'm kind of thinking kyle maybe to i don't know kind of maybe wrap it up but you know when you're talking about either there's a situation that Bud had and he would say, you know, he probably wouldn't suggest the way of saying, keep your money. I'm going to go find my own. Or you have someone like that was at your, your athletic show saying, I can't afford that. Right. That's too much money to get all that stuff. What What's some advice on, on, you know, like for our customers, how do they convince other people internally to be able to get something like this to happen? Yeah. I mean, the, the first things first is, is reach out to, to your DAC rep and talk to us. Um, you know, Bud is here literally as a consultant to, to teach you what he did, walk you through, uh, you know, we, we didn't get to what, what maybe he would have changed. I, I don't know how many of those things there are in his project, but, but Bud's a pretty open and honest guy, if you can't tell. And he'll, <laughs> he'll, uh, he'll tell you, you know, what, what his opinion is on, on a project happening. And um, the coolest part is our sports marketing people deal for with, with schools that are, that are small rural schools, all the way up to uh, um, you know wealthy suburban communities that uh, that have large projects. They're used to doing all of these things uh, or all of these projects across the country. So it's our 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 staff is is pretty top notch to work with. Um, and then beyond that, you know, I think um, you, you you won't know until you try. So uh, that's a cool thing about working with Dextronics is that we'll we're willing to help you out. Even if you, even if you aren't able to raise that money and, and make a purchase, we still want to help you give it a try uh, at Dectronics. So there's, there's so much opportunity out there. There's so much uh, um, businesses that want to support your community. And there's so much you can do with a video board. We didn't even get into screen mirroring from tablets and all this other stuff that you can do up, up onto your gymnasium video board. So there's so much, uh, so much excitement around this stuff and, and we're happy to have Bud on board to share his story and, and teach others the potential that they have in their community. And, and I guess if, uh, if there is something to, um, uh, to leave behind, I guess it's just don't, don't rule it out because your budget says it's not there. Get, get in contact and, and let's figure it out. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on guys and, and talking to us about, of the Actronic Sports Marketing and what it can do. We're going to put some links in the show notes on how they can contact us if, there, if anybody's got any questions, probably to see if we've got some literature we can link to if people want to look more in detail. But uh, I appreciate you guys taking the time and, and joining us here to share share your stories and about uh, uh, the sports marketing. Well, thanks for, well, having, thanks for having, having us. Having a great time. All right. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. All right. Take care. Go Pack. See ya. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of the Dactronics Experience Podcast. Please subscribe at your favorite place to listen to podcasts to keep up with our latest episodes. 